Rhino RX welcomes you to the metaverse where you can create your own world, host events, speak internationally, sell in a virtual storefront. Creators programs available. The future of education is here. Rhino Studio, Ready Player One. Go ahead and scan the QR code. Join the Silver program today. Hello, everyone, and welcome to 360 Wisdom Speaks. Our guest today, calling in from Nova Scotia, Canada, is Heather Abbott. Welcome to the show, young lady. I'm very pleased to be here. Thank you. Yeah, we're going to have a great time today. Nicole's going to read a short bio about you so the audience has a little information and then we are going to get started. So go ahead, Nicole. Well, Heather Abbott is known as the Prosperity Pro because she uses over 30 years expertise as a CPA, financial advisor, and business owner to support her clients in creating significant shifts and results. When you have a mission or a dream that feels too big, Heather will guide you on your unique path to overcome challenges, reach your goals more easily, and make the impact you want. Welcome, Heather. It's a pleasure to be here. Wow, we're going to talk about money today. Ooh, this is going to be good because who doesn't want money? Right. But again, it's what the energy of money is and what it can do you know, for humanity, right? Mm -hmm. You know, it's not what money is going to do to define you. It's where it can take you when you have an understanding that money is nothing more than energy and how to incorporate that into your life. And coming into the end of the year, we're coming to massive changes for 2022, the year of abundance and prosperity. So I am just going to let you take over, Heather, and share your magic. It's nice that you use the word magic because uh, that's what I say, magic and money. That's what I bring to the table. So um, you made you made some really good points there. And unfortunately, I didn't write them down and I went right back out of my head. <laughs> uh, yeah, so it is just energy. Money is energy. It's a tool. It helps us get the things that we want. It's not what we want. People think, oh, I want money. No, you don't. You want the things money can get you. There's nothing in this world that you want that you don't want it because um, the reason you want it is always that you think you will feel better if you have it, right? So um, when we move forward with this, and when you talk as an accountant to financial advisor, one thing I have always seen is people run the other way. They don't want to talk about money. They don't want to talk about their finances. They don't want to look at their books. And that's fine. You can you can hire someone to do it. Um, people will get into trouble with businesses if they hire a bookkeeper and never look at the work that the bookkeeper prepares. You have to look at the statements yourself. Um, personally, is... I, I deal with people more on a personal level because I find a lot of them have lost the joy or their business, they have success, but it doesn't feel like what they want it to feel like. It doesn't look like what they want, want it to look like. Do, do you know what I'm, what I'm, what I mean there, Beverly? Yeah, I, I do. It's, it's that question. It's like, they don't feel fulfilled, right? Yeah. It's like, is this my purpose? I mean, I wanted to be successful. I wanted to have, you know, financial freedom on, you know, this money in the bank. I wanted to be able to go and do what I wanted to do, but something's missing. And I feel that it's that passion in life, that purpose, you know, when you can get back on focus, you know, find your identity and your purpose, then it reaches to fulfillment. And fulfillment yeah. is that abundance, right, that surrounds, right? It's not just the money. And it's like you said, it's what money can do for you. But what more importantly, the money that you have, what it can do for others as well, right? Yes, yes. Um, 
I say that my ideal target market are actually people who have success, who have money, um, but they aren't feeling fulfilled. They aren't feeling the prosperity. They want more. They they aren't feeling like they've achieved their purpose. And the reason that they're my target market is because if they're already successful, if they already have a reach, impacting them will impact more people more quickly than I could if I was focusing on the lower tier who are just getting started. Not that I don't work with them, I will. It's just, I want to have a big impact and it's my mission to help others to achieve their missions. So I take it, I have um, a system that gives you clarity with your money, which people, people don't want clarity. Yeah, actually they do. They, don't, they may not call it that, but they want to know what they can and cannot afford when they're making decisions. They want to know exactly where is my money going? Is it doing what I want it to do? Am I going to achieve what I want? And I combine that with looking at what are your goals? What is it that is so important to you? What are, what are your big dreams? What are your goals? What's your dream day look like? And look at all of those and combine the two and see is what you're doing with your money, now that we can see exactly what it is, is that aligned with what you say you want to be doing? Sometimes it's as simple as someone who's saying they want to save, but there's no evidence of savings in what they're doing. They're spending money constantly on these small treats for themselves to reward them on a day-to-day -day basis in small ways, whereas if they save that up, it could go a long way toward getting them toward one of their bigger goals. Oh, that's, you know, so true. And it's definitely relevant as to how we function. It's like, oh, we have a little extra, let's do something with it, right? <clears throat> and so when you can really get the realization, like you said, the clarity. And again, it goes back to that not feeling fulfilled. And so you want to buy all these little sweetness pieces and parts of, oh, yeah, if I get this, it'll make me happy. Well, not so much, you know, and then all of a sudden your garage is full and then you got a storage unit full. Then you got a second storage unit full, right? And then, oh, my gosh, I got all this stuff. What the heck, you know? So when we look at how things build up in our life, how we pile on all these things, look to fulfill a gap. So when you're working with your clients, you know, what are some of the things that you suggest to them that you probably suggested to yourself? Because that's what brought you into this, you know, business, because we know as, as entrepreneurs, we teach what we needed most, right? And, well, and we've learned move through that that shift. Exactly. Exactly. So what can you share with the audience to have them help them recognize why they're not feeling fulfilled and what they can do to get that feeling? Well, I would say it relates to what you just said, where you you were referring to collecting things and filling houses and buildings. A lot of the people that I deal with are in an online space. And for those people, it's not so much physical things that they're collecting, but they're collecting digital courses and advice from too many people. They're collecting all these tactics, but they don't have a strategy to pull them together. If you're trying to get from where you are to where you want to be, you want to focus on building one bridge to get there, right? Because if you're trying to build 10 bridges at the same time, it's going to take you a lot longer to get to the other side. So my goal is, my purpose is to help you to see what the different strategies are, give you the pros and cons, help you to choose which one is most suitable to you, and then guide you along and keep you. It's almost like putting blinders on a horse, right? That you, you have to stay focused because you can get taken off track. And this is something that I've come up against because I have um, a longing to learn constantly. It's like, oh, I, I haven't heard of that. I, I don't know that. Let me learn that. 
And it's not so much that I want it for myself even, it's because I, I have this huge tool belt that I've been collecting all this information all my life and filling it so that when I go to help people, I have a lot of resources to draw on. And while that's all well and good, I compare buying courses, online courses and, and help to collecting shoes. And, and women will relate to this because how, who doesn't love a great pair of shoes if it's on sale, right? So you get um, into this habit of, oh, look at that course. Oh, that looks like something I might be able to use and it's on sale. Oh, I better get it now. And you stick it in a file on your computer and you never open it again. It's just like buying that extra pair of black shoes because, oh, they're on sale and they fit nicely. I think they're gonna work and you put them in your closet. Well, how many pairs of shoes are you actually going to collect and let collect dust in your closet? Because while they seemed like it, it's like, oh, well, they kind of pinched my toe, so I'm never going to wear them, but I'm going to keep them because I paid money for them. So a lot of people, a lot of entrepreneurs, especially, they get into this where they buy things that look like it is the solution that they want because they don't have a clear path in front of them. And that is one of the hardest things is wanting to move forward, but only being able to see that one step. And sometimes they don't know what the one step is. So they've got multiple first steps laying around them and they don't know where to start. And that of course leads to analysis paralysis. I'm not gonna do anything because I don't know where to start. <laughs> Very well said. Very well said. I like, loved your analogy because that is so true. You know, oh, bright shiny objects, grab. Oh, another one. Oh, another one, right? Squirrel. And, and we do, we get into that. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Squirrel here and squirrel there. You know, and we're all guilty of it at one point in our life. But like you say, there's so many first steps and a confused mind does nothing, right? Exactly. And so it's move away from the confusion. And again, I think, like you said, it's that clarity. Without the clarity, you don't have direction. Without direction, you don't have action. Without action, you become stagnant. And when you're stagnant, nothing progresses, right? So you keep running on this hamster wheel around and around and around we go, right? Somebody stop the world and let me off. You know, so when you don't have an understanding of what your purpose is, it's hard to get a clarity of, as to where you're going to go, right? So understanding that why, that why will help you to understand and find your purpose. But sometimes when we don't have the identity of who we are, when we don't really know who we are at the core, it's like, wow, it's like starting all over, you know, and going through that rebirthing process. And sometimes it doesn't feel good doesn't smell good, doesn't taste good, doesn't sound good. But you know what? If you move through it and allow yourself, give yourself permission to say, okay, where is it that I need to be? What is it that I need to do? What is actually going to fill my heart, fill my soul? What, what can I do to become the best me to make a difference, to leave that legacy. Because everyone on the planet wants to leave a legacy of some sort, right? So yeah. if we don't know what that is and we don't know how to thrive for it and reach for it, it's because we don't have that passion and we don't really understand the depth of who we are internally. So it all begins with you, right? Yeah. So when you're working in that aspect of finances, because the old saying, Money doesn't buy happiness, does it? No, but it makes it easier. <laughs> it sure does. <laughs> Nothing, especially you when you know you have to create it yourself. <laughs> exactly. So when when you understand and fulfill that purpose, money then can be an asset to more fulfillment for humanity, for the self, and really help you move into that legacy. That why can you talk a little bit on that yeah uh it's it's especially an issue with heart-centered um people 
entrepreneurs um, because and and for myself as well it's so easy right like I, I'm I'm getting paid to be me I I this knowledge yes I have spent years acquiring it and if you wanted to get the same knowledge I have it's going to cost you a lot of time and a lot of money but we undervalue it because it is so easy for us and well we're just we want to help everybody oh well it's a new friend well no there's a friend zone for business people as well they are yes you like them that's why you want to work with them you wouldn't want to work with someone who you wouldn't want to consider a friend but you do have to keep that line there and people need to pay you for your services even bartering is great but is the course that they're giving you in exchange for your course going to buy you food and if you don't have money, how are you going to reach more people? You can help a lot of people on this level, right? The bottom level, you can you can get out there and help all those people that really, really need you because you know they're in a hard spot still and they're just trying to get started. And that can be very hard for people to get away from. The point is, if you go higher and you help the people at a higher level and get paid well to do it, you are going to have a bigger impact faster and you will have enough money coming in to maintain your lifestyle, to be able to give. Wealthy people are the most generous people because they can afford to be. And then you have time where you can give the information in a way yes you need to charge something because people if it's valued at nothing they think it's worth nothing um to help those at a lower level um i do want to step back to one step to what you were saying before about getting clarity if you hold a notebook in front of your face like two inches from your face who's going to read it more easily me or you like you're back there, can you read it better than me if I'm holding it two inches from my face? That's the problem. We can't see our own stuff. You can see it. Someone else will be able to give you views on yourself that you can't get yourself because you're too close to it to see it. An outside view is just sometimes the whole purpose of having a coach or a mentor is to have a mirror so that they can reflect back to you the parts of you that you can't see can't see the forest through the trees. So I just wanted to step back to that um, for a second because it is very important. Um, yeah, you know, that is that is a very important message right there because we get in our own way and we don't see that, you know, and to be able to open up and be an expression and, and just ask, you know, ask your family, ask your friends, ask the neighbor, ask your classmates, you know, it's like, you know, what is it you like most about me? And what is it you just like really don't like about me? <laughs> right? And start paying attention because they're going to tell you. You ask for it and say, hey, don't buffer. I really need to know this because I'm going through a personal growth here and I can't see myself the way you see me. Right. And that is opening the lines of communication as well. And so you start looking at yourself from the avenue of truth versus the avenue of a lie right mm -hmm. yes and that is great for getting that that self-realization it is one caveat on there is if you are doing that for business purposes and you're getting like this person's giving me 30 minutes of free coaching and this person's giving me 15 minutes of free coaching that's going to get you confused you really need as for the clarity on personality, growth and stuff, things that family and friends can give you, that's fantastic. But for the business strategy, if you're an entrepreneur and you're trying to move forward, too many cooks ruin the stew. Is that, I, I, I can't remember the exact quote. Yeah, exactly. You yeah. can't. Too it, many chefs in the kitchen. <laughs> you can't get yeah, the right, you the, really the right need recipe. Exactly. Exactly. Focus. You, if people do, you will hear successful people saying, oh, well, I've got four coaches, but each coach is for something separate. They may have a speaking coach. They may have a business coach. They may have a financial coach. Um, even then, there'll be some overlap, but 
you have to make sure that you are you pick a path and you stick to it. Um, one of my mentors, Joe DeMaria, he always says, what are you hiring the thing to do? So whenever you make a decision in your business, if you're creating a website or you're saying you want to create a website and you want to create a YouTube channel and you want to start doing social media stuff, why? What are you hiring that to do? Because everything you put your time into in your business, time and money are both very valuable. Um, some people have more of time than they have money and some people have more money than time and it's a totally different approach but you have to really be specific that what you're doing is going to move your business ahead that you're not just busy that you're productive so every day you should be choosing um, this is what I say you should be going and choosing at least one up to three things that will actually move your business forward that day. So this is so that you don't get into busy mode and you're just, oh man, I worked 10 hours today. Great. What did you do that moved your business forward? Name one thing. A lot of them don't. Uh, I've seen it. Exactly. Like, like an email, um, email. <laughs> Hell, right? Where you're, just, <laughs> you're just going through emails and trying to unsubscribe. <laughs> it's just taking. Oh my your goodness! I don't even want to go down that rabbit hole. Been there one too many times. But what you said is so true. Where you get busy being busy. But I really like what you said about what are you hiring that thing to do, whatever it is, and really take a look. Is it going to get you to the outcome? You know, so it's knowing and understanding that outcome. Heather, this has been absolutely wonderful. You shared so many great things. We're going to take a short break and then we're going to come back because Nicole has some questions for you. Rhino RX welcomes you to the metaverse where you can create your own world host events, speak internationally, sell in a virtual storefront. Creators programs available. The future of education is here. Rhino Studio, ready player one. Go ahead and scan the QR code. Join the silver program today. Hello everyone and welcome back to 360 Wisdom Speaks. Our guest, Heather, has just been sharing so many great morsels of wisdom when it comes to finances and how it can change your life when you allow yourself to define your finances instead of your finances defining you. So we're going to let Nicole take over from here because she's got some amazing questions for Heather to find out a little bit more how she got to where she is today. Well, great. Thanks, Beverly. You know, it, it's, it's a little scary for me, I will say, listening to this because it's the connection with money. And that is something in my life that I am changing myself. And so we bring forth what we need, right? Uh, the universe kind of presents that to us in a way as long as we're awake to it. And, and that the meaning of, of that connection to money and the deserving. But Heather, first I want to ask you, how did you get into this? How did you start to share and say, hey, I understand money. I know money. I, I, I'm, I'm awakened to the energy of money. And, and I always love to say woke doesn't mean broke. So you don't have to be the, the spiritual guru and broke because like you said before, you know, if, if I'm rich, then I can share the richness with others and I can educate them on how to keep that richness. And it's a continuum, right? It's a continuous cycle. What was that, that, that turning moment for you to say, hey, you know what? I need to have that good relationship with money and I need to share it with others. Wow, that's quite a question. Um, well, I can tell you how I became an accountant it was just because I took accounting in high school and it was super easy. So March, my graduating year, I'm like, well, I have to do something. And okay, I'll be an accountant. That's how I became an accountant. Um, how I became a financial advisor, sort of similar. It was. Um, I was in a nasty marriage. It was very mentally abusive and I was very much in denial. And uh, Investors Group 
a friend of mine was working for them and I knew that they flew her places for training and that meant that she got to fly alone. So nobody could go with you. So I wanted that job. And it was mainly so that I could have freedom and get out. I didn't even, I, I didn't care what it was I was gonna have to do. I had no idea, didn't care. Did the interview, got the job and I was like, okay, where am I going? And they flew me some places and it, it, it gave me freedom back, which I had been sorely lacking. Um, teaching is something I've always done, always. Um, in high school, um, I, I helped other students with their stuff. Uh, it's just natural. My clients always knew what was going on, why it was going on. I educated them as part of being their accountant or their financial advisor. I never had clients that were confused about what I was doing or why. They would have knowledge and they would make informed decisions themselves. Uh, that is just innate in who I am and what I do, I teach. I first heard that you could get paid to talk and travel and teach uh, probably 15 years ago. And I was like, I want that job. And it took a while because I still had to get my freedom uh, from that marriage, which yay, I got 2015. And it's been a journey to this place where I am actually online and able to speak a lot and created my own show and podcast and courses and content and getting coaching clients and loving it. Um, the pivot point this year, that really it's been quite a year of networking and speaking is uh, I, synchronicities, I love them. I had signed up for an email list, um, Danella Burnett to be specific in December, didn't even know who she was, clicked an email one day and I was like, I don't know who this is from. I don't know what this is. I'll check it out. And it was a networking event that I went to and I was like, oh, wow. And I cleared my schedule and I, it just has snowballed all year. And the people I have met and gotten to know have been critical in driving this all forward. So it's it's been a joy. You know that it, it's it's when we listen to what what the universe is telling us, kind of when we when we listen to our conscious and when we awaken to that, right? And 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 I I work a lot of that with that with with triggers and and awakening to your environment and your consciousness. And that's what it was I know for me and I know for many, many other people, uh, especially in this kind of community, especially now, 2020 has really taught us to kind of go inward, go within so we don't go without and see well, what is it that, 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 that we are constantly sabotaging, but we can move forward and change no matter how late in life it is. Are we ready to open up to the joy? And it's the sacral chakra that has to do with that money right that 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 orange or that 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 deep amber um color the citrine it's and more of the, it's is a, it the root chakra it's, or it, it starts in the root because it's our foundation uh absolutely mm -hmm. it's our root and our connection to family what keeps us rooting rooted and so hold having money is a great foundational uh, um, practice right having money having money in the bank a little cash here and there having money saved uh, even for a rainy day or in case something happens, it's it's our root or do we have a foundation if we're building a house, right? Do we have a foundation for our family? Uh, do we have something in, in case something happens? And we know the in case came up recently, right? <laughs> that showed us, you know, did, did we save a little bit? Did we prep a little bit uh, for our future and for our now, right now? The other thing is once it starts yeah. to move into the sacral chakra, it's that's about the desire, right? And it's about the connection to the deserving. Do I deserve this money? Do I deserve this connection? Do I deserve to be on this oh, podcast, okay. right? And so it's the desire. And it, it has a lot to do within our relationships too, you know? And, and when we awaken our kundalini and that serpentine energy in our chakra, we start to awaken what is desirable for us. And you talked about shoes earlier. And that's great because you desire a good pair of shoes, right? It, it's comfortable. You look sexy. You look great in it, ladies, right? 
and and you know or men a good handmade leather shoe the way that they walk the way that you carry yourself that's a desire to have that and it's good to have something that that you're putting money towards that's an investment not 600 shoes at walmart you know even just because they're 20 bucks you don't have to get all all 100 of them <laughs> right but it's yeah it's you that, have to be aware that the shoes don't become clutter right oh yeah that oh take yeah take away your energy rather than add to it absolutely absolutely and that's in in our in our in our chakra it, is that that's that desire and and seeing you move towards your passion of traveling and teaching and and that is you know see the light to see the light in your face with the desire and the passion mm -hmm. that you have to bring to other people about money and it, and, and thank you for doing that i mean on me on a personal level and it, it's not all about me but it's the people i connect with and it when it's about us it's about our group of people right and and people in business and and people that we know we have to look outside what are we connecting if if i heal this i can move forward and, and heal the people around me and we can all heal ourselves and have that money to do good things to travel to take time off i actually right yeah when you said that your relationship with money wasn't always good and you speak about deserving, I should go back a little bit because I have come across people who say, well, I know you don't really get it because I'm really struggling. And I'm like, okay, yeah, no, I get that. Been there, done that. Like I had two credit cards and they were maxed. So it was at the point where I went and made a payment on one credit card and use the open space that that created to make the payment on the other card and then use the open space on that card to get groceries. So I've been there. I've had like not a hole in my deserving, a gaping cavern in my sense of deserving. Being in a mentally abusive relationship does not help that. And you have, as an accountant, a financial advisor, you think you have shame about not having money? You try wearing those two hats and being broke. That's fun. Yeah, no, <laughs> that's not a good place to be. And it was, it's choices that we make. It's beliefs that we hold. I, you don't always see the choices available to you. Not making a choice is a choice. And I didn't realize at the time that me paying all the bills and letting him off the hook even though I couldn't afford to pay the bills, I could have made a different choice. I didn't realize it. I could have said, mm -mm, I don't have the money, you gotta pay it. That didn't occur to me, honestly, until like the last six months I was with him <laughs> out of 25 years. <laughs> and I laugh because I hear you, I've been there. I understand that. And, and, and I think, you, you know, you're open. You're open about that and you're honest about that. And that's what we need to be. We need to be open about our money, whether it's women, whether it's men, we need to be open and honest. And it's that communication and the lines are severed. If we're not communicating verbally, if we're not communicating physically, uh, our, our desires, our needs, our wants, whether that also goes to our bills. We're not talking about money and allowing somebody to just not do anything. You're enabling them and in enabling them, you're harming yourself. You're harming your relationship. And it just goes so deep, deep, deep. And it's just that that freedom to say, oh, this is just not working out. Maybe it's time for a change. And that's okay to ask for help. It is okay to ask for help, but we don't want to talk about money. Or in a circle of people are, you know, I'm, I'm broke. It's, it's okay to be poor. Why do you want to be there? If you have the choice not to be there, then let's change it. And that's how we change people from being everybody from being poor. It's not just by giving to them, which is great because I love being in servitude to others. However, if we get it out of that poor mentality, that, 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 you know, that constant poorness, then, then we can all prosper, all have food, all have a great place to live, all have, have, have fun in travel or going shopping and buying or what we want or what we need, or, you know, just that, whatever, that, that bar of chocolate or whatever for the little kid, right? You know, just something fun yeah. to reward and celebrate and say, hey, I'm okay, I can do this. That makes such a difference to say that we can all shift that. We can all get out of that poor state of mind because it's when we're in a poor state of mind, we suffer mentally, physically, emotionally. Our health is bad. 
our minds are bad. We get in the fear. We get in the 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 not deserving. But let's 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 take let's understand it's time to deserve. It's time to be in prosperity. And this is the time. It's so important because the full moon is coming and 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 the solstice. And next year is about receiving our abundance. Right now is about asking each day for the abundance and what we manifest and taking action on it. And how can we do that? We can look at our books <laughs> and understand our connection to money. Be thankful every time we pay a bill and thankful every time we touch a dollar, buy a cup of coffee. Be thankful for that to say, hey, universe, I'm liking this. It's okay. Act it's as a, if it's a thousand dollars when you find a dime. There's two um, resources that you made me think of. One is T. Harbecker's book, The Secret of the Millionaire Mind, because he describes that victim poor mentality that you need to get rid of very, very well. I highly recommend the book. The other is um, Abraham Hicks actually it says you can't, people think that being rich takes away from others, but that's not so. The universe is not created that way. You never think, oh, my best friend is really sick. If I get sick, she'll be able to get better, right? That makes no <laughs> sense to you, correct? <laughs> so it doesn't make any more sense. It, this was their example and it makes so much sense. You can't get sick enough to make someone else be healthy and you can't get poor enough to make someone else be rich. Yeah. It's their block. And you becoming wealthy will help others to yeah. follow your example. When your energy raises, you raise the energy of those around you. You don't have to get your husband or your, your partner in any way or children or anyone to do the things that you're doing to raise your vibration. All you have to do is raise your energy, raise your vibration, and they will be lifted up just from being around you. Oh, a hundred percent. That's so beautiful. Well said. And I'm going to bring Beverly in because we could talk for, for days on how to change, how to be that change and how to prosper uh, in this next year and, and, and put really that down in that manifestation and that full moon and clear all that and make space for something new. Talk about decluttering. That's what the full moon is about. It's about decluttering and releasing so we can bring it in fresh and new. And this is the best time for that. And I'm going to bring Beverly in because I know she has more questions for you. Oh, wow. There's so many things that you tapped on that actually, you know, triggered. And it's like, yeah, she's, she's been sneaking around. She's been watching me, right? <laughs> you know, so we all have some of those, some of those skeletons in the closet, shall we say, when it comes to money. But I really, really love the analogy that you just shared there um, at the end with, you know, you can't get sick enough to make somebody else get better. And you can't get, you can't get poor enough to make someone else rich, right? And just because you're rich enough doesn't mean you're making someone else poor. It's those choices that we all make. And again, we, you know, it goes back to the things we talked about in the first half of the show, right? If you don't feel worthy and deserving of it, if you don't actually know what is fulfilling you and what isn't what your purpose is, then all of the things that you do around money are not going to bring that fulfillment and that increase of energy, you know, with it. So all these little things that you shared here today, Heather, are so important, so critical, you know, so anyone listening out there today, you know, where has some of these little tips, some of these, this conversation, where has it kind of hit you below the belt maybe? What is it that you can do? Go back and listen again and start looking inward at the things that triggered you. But Heather, right now, could you share just three things, three major tips that are going to make it a little bit easier on the audience that they can, you know, leave the show and put these three tips into action to help their relationship and feel that fulfillment when it comes to having money? Well, first off, I would say that making any leap in life, any big leap, whether that's leaving a relationship or it's getting over money blocks, creating wealth, all of those 
things. Um, you have to want it more and be uncomfortable where you are more. You have to want it more than the fear of it. You have to be at the point where you've had enough and you're going to make the change. That's number one. Um, number two, um, shame is not going to help you. Being ashamed of where you are and what you where what you've made out of your business so far is unproductive and it's not necessary. There is no need to be ashamed. You likely were doing your best with what you knew and shame is going to keep you hidden and keep you stuck. So let go of the shame. Um, the last one, it actually doesn't relate directly to money, but it's really critical to prosperity because mm -hmm. to me, prosperity is wealth and joy because true prosperity has to have both. And this is don't orphan your inner child. There's a part of you that wants to just go out and play. I have hula hoops I've made. I have bubbles that I blow when I go for a walk. I take the bubbles. Remember that you need to laugh and be happy every day. Every day you should be looking when you wake up in the morning, don't go back to where you were the day before, what was going on, don't relive it. Stop at the end of that day, write it down if you have to, put down your to-dos related to anything that carries forward. Don't revisit the day before because when you go to sleep, you reset. And it's a brand new day, brand new life. Make the best of it. And when you wake up, say, what does the universe have special in store for me today that I'm not expecting? What do I have to look forward to? You should always have that sense of adventure and looking forward to something in your life. And if you have that, you will see that you will move ahead. And even if you're moving ahead slowly, it won't matter so much because you'll be happy. And as long as you're happy, nothing else matters, right? There you go. Great words of wisdom. So go back a little bit and rewind this and listen to what these tips that Heather shared here today because they will make a difference in your life. So, you know, Nicole, thank you so much for being here. Heather, it's been a pleasure having you here. And we want to say thank you to the audience for listening. And if you liked it, and you want to know more about Heather and you want to find her, all of her information is going to be attached to the video, attached to the audio, whichever way you're listening or viewing. Her information is there for you. Reach out to her and reach out to yourself to make yourself the best you that you can be. And every day, wake up, like she says, and be happy and say, universe, bring it on. What do you have for me? I'm ready to receive. So thank you again for being here, Heather. Thank you, Nicole. And this is 360 Wisdom Speak saying, go out there and make it a wise choice in whatever it is you're choosing to do today. Bye. Rhino RX welcomes you to the metaverse where you can create your own world host events, speak internationally, sell in a virtual storefront. Creators programs available. The future of education is here. Rhino Studio, ready player one. Go ahead and scan the QR code. Join the silver program today.